In previous videos in the bioinformatics playlist, I've shown you how you could build machine learning models to predict the solubility and also the bioactivity of compounds. And so in this video, I'm going to be answering one of the questions by the subscriber about the differentiation of SMILES notation, the paddle fingerprints, and which one can we use for the machine learning model building. And so without further ado, we're starting right now. So today I received a question from Dylan and his question is, is there a reason to use paddle fingerprint over something like smile? I would guess that paddle may have more clear functional group information, but I have read ML papers that have used smile to great success. Okay, so this is a great question for papers making use directly of the smiles for construction of a machine learning model i would guess that is probably one of the recent paper and probably using deep learning and the concept would to use the smiles notation convert that into a vector and then use that vector for the building of a deep learning model but for the development of machine learning models using smiles directly that is not yet possible because the smiles notation is essentially will tell about the connectivity of the atoms, whereby two characters that are close to one another will signify that they have a single bond. And if they have an equal sign, it means that they have a double bond. And in order to provide a more meaningful description of the molecular features of the compound, these smiles notation will have to be converted into a more descriptive form via the use of software that will allow us to calculate the molecular descriptors. And the paddle software that I have used in one of the earlier tutorials will essentially provide us the ability to calculate molecular descriptors and also fingerprint descriptors. So about a month ago, I have written an article in Tower State of Science. So let me show you that. And the article is called How to Build a Regression Model in Python a detailed and visual step-by-step -step walkthrough. So in this article, I've used the Delani solubility data set. So this data set is essentially a data set of compounds or small molecule with the reported solubility index. And so the objective of this data set is we're going to transform the SMILES notation into general molecular properties, such as the molecular weight, the log P in order to use those molecular properties for the prediction of the solubility, the unique solubility of the molecule, which is an important property for drug discovery efforts. And so in this article, I've drawn an infographic that summarizes the essence of the conversion of SMILES notation to the molecular descriptors and how those molecular descriptors are then used for the building of a machine learning model. So in this illustration, the two molecules that we see here are essentially different molecules, and we call it molecule one and molecule two. So these are hypothetical molecules that I've created, and notice the color that we see here, the green color and the red color. So at this position, there will be a hydrogen atom, which is not shown, whereas in molecule two, instead of a hydrogen atom, it will contain the CH3 functional group. And in molecule two, there is a hydrogen atom indicated by the red dot here. But then for molecule one, instead of a hydrogen atom, it has a CH3 functional group. So a CH3 is a metal group. And so if we look at the following below here, these represents the calculated fingerprint descriptors, X1 through X16. So this is hypothetical. And so each of the X1, X2, X3 will represent a different functional group. And the value of one or zero will represent whether the molecule has the particular functional group or do not have the particular functional group. And so this molecule chemical structure could be represented by the SMILES notation. So actually in this infographic, I haven't drawn a SMILES notation. So let me show you how does it look like. Actually, let's go to the PubChem database. So let me find, for example, aspirin. Okay, so this is the molecular structure of aspirin. Now let's find the, let's click on it. And let's find the SMILES notation. So shown here is the 2D structure. Here is the 3D structure. 
and the smiles notation is right here the canonical smiles so smiles right here so this is the smile notation and the smiles notation was calculated by OE Chem. and so essentially this encodes the information of this chemical structure okay and so this is the canonical smiles so as i've mentioned earlier the two carbon atoms that we see here they're connected by a single bond. And this particular carbon atom will be double bonded to a oxygen atom. And likewise, C1 here will cyclize to form a ring with the C1 right here. So it means that this C1 atom will be connected to the C1 atom to form a cyclic ring indicated right here. It will form a cyclic ring, okay? And so the O, you see the double bonds, the two lines here are the double bonds. They're indicated by the equal sign. And the hydrogen atom is implicit, meaning that they are not shown, but they are implied to be present owing to the concept of valency. Okay, so this smiles notation is essentially could be compared to a sentence. In a typical sentence, so we could think of a typical sentence as a collection of words, and each word could be comparable to each of the atoms here. And so in a text mining project or natural language processing, you would essentially have to encode your words or the tokens, like for example, via the one hot encoding. And so in the domain of molecular descriptor calculation, the encoding of a molecular fingerprint shown here will represent the molecular fingerprint, which is calculated by the SMILES notation, as I have shown you earlier. And such fingerprints or molecular descriptors, right? It could also be molecular descriptors, which would account for other property of the molecule, like the charge descriptor, the solubility, the molecular weight. Okay, so these are more like general properties of the molecule, or even the energy, total energy of the molecule, or the homo lumo energy, the highest occupied molecular orbital energy or the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital energy. So these are coming from the field of computational chemistry and they represent the energetic levels in the molecular orbitals and it generally tells the reactivity of the molecule. Okay, and so such molecular descriptors or fingerprints will then be used as a data set together with the class label. So in this example, the class label would be the bioactivity of a molecule, whether the molecule that we show here are able to inhibit a particular protein of our interest. And the X matrix here will represent the X descriptors or the input descriptor, which will be used for predicting the Y, which is the ability to inhibit or not inhibit. If it is able to inhibit the target protein, it will have a value of one. If not, it will have a value of zero. And so such X and Y matrices are then used for the development of a machine learning model. So essentially you would feed the X and Y into the model. For example, you might be using the scikit-learn in Python, or you might be using the caret package in R. And once a predictive model is built, you will essentially be able to use it for predicting the bioactivity or the Y variable of an unknown molecule. Meaning that if you have a new molecule and you have the corresponding SMILES notation, you will take the SMILES notation and then perform molecular descriptor calculation. So essentially, you will convert the SMILES notation into a fingerprint form, like here, a fingerprint form. And then such fingerprint will serve as the X descriptors, and it will be fed into the machine learning model, and the machine learning model will be predicting the bioactivity class label. So in this example, molecule three is a new molecule and it has a particular SMILES notation. And then we will calculate the molecular fingerprint using a program such as Paddle. And then such molecular fingerprint will be fed into the machine learning model for a prediction of the bioactivity class label. Okay, and additionally, the machine learning model could also output the following feature importance plot, such as from random forest algorithm. Okay, and so I hope that this video explains the differences between the SMILES notation, which essentially will explain about the connectivity of the individual atoms, like how they are connected via single or double bonds,
and whether they form a cyclic ring or not. If they are forming a cyclic ring, it will have the C1 and C1. So they will have two C1 present. Okay, and so I'll provide you the links to more information that you could read up on in order to understand more how the SMILES notation is created or the inspiration for the development of the SMILES notation. Okay, and so I hope that this answers your question. If you're finding value in this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't yet done so, hit on the notification bell in order to be notified of the next video. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science. And please enjoy the journey. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you in the next one. But in the meantime, please check out these videos.